We have always such incredible people that come on our show, but our next guest is truly something special. Dylan is the youngest competitor to win the Triple Crown, number one in the nation in forms, weapons, and fighting at five years old and back to back at the age of six. He is also the youngest to win world grand champion at six years old. He is the third, he is a third degree black belt in Korean, Taekwondo, Mudok Kwan, and Tong Sodo. A blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He also studies Japanese Shotokan and American Kempo. He trained for two years in boxing with five time world champion Johnny Tapia. Dylan has won to date 1,079 trophies and awards, 69 grand championships, 93 world championships, over 100 national and state championships in the United States Karate Alliance, International Martial Arts Council, United States Association of Martial Artists, United States Alliance. This is a handful, everyone. Dylan does and teaches 11 different weapons and has won world championships with five different weapons. Dylan has been teaching and owns his own martial arts school for five years and has over 80 students. Help me welcome Dylan Vargas, everyone. Dylan, welcome, welcome. Thank you, sir. How Thank are you, you doing, man? Good, sir. How are you? What an honor to have you on the show. This is well, so cool. Thank well, you. Thank you, sir. I'm an sorry. We here. were we were talking back. We were talking briefly backstage, and <laughs> you have owned your own school. You gave me this awesome shirt of your school, your martial arts school, and you've owned it for five years. He's 18, so that means he started his own business at 13. Yes, like, sir. Like what? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh my God! Wow. Man. It's it's a it's a very um, you know uh, authentic story for one. Um, to be asked for that job, I was uh, an eighth grader at a private school in Gallup, Sacred Heart uh, Cathedral School, and uh, they didn't have enough sports. All they had um, was really track. They didn't have enough for soccer. Um, they barely had enough for basketball, and so they needed another sport as uh, for extracurricular yeah. kind of thing. So they, they asked me, "Would you be willing to, to teach the students here martial arts?" I'd be like, wow. At eighth uh, grade? Eighth grade, yes, sir. <laughs> and I think back then I was a second degree black belt. And uh, so I said, yeah, sure, yes, of course, it would be an honor to do that. And so I talked to the, to the students for that full eighth grade year. And uh, it went so well, they let me teach throughout the summer. And then that next year, what they had let me do, along with teaching the students, they allowed me to open it up to the public. So wow. I was, I was uh, y you know, I was putting myself out there. Well, you're the, the best school. of the best. So I mean, they better <laughs> want you to teach their kids this. This is, you're the, there's no one better. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah. You, you mentioned, you mentioned your second degree black belt. Uh, yes, sec sir. I don't, I, I don't, I'm not familiar with this industry. So explain the belt, sure. the, the belt system. Here. Sure. Yes, sir. So um, a belt system, every uh, style, Japanese style, Korean style, um, different styles around the world, they give belts a little differently. But uh, my main style, it goes from white, yellow, orange, green, purple, blue, three levels of brown, and then you're black. But the, the whole meaning... a lot of stages. Yes, sir. And the, the whole meaning of a belt is back from in the Orient, the ancient times, um, people wore a belt, you know, to keep up their pants. Because that's what the, the whole meaning of a belt is, just to keep up the pants. That's it. And everybody thinks, oh, it's a big, big deal. All it is is really just to keep, you is know, for a very simple thing. Is that thing. its purpose still to this day? Yes, sir. Just to hold it up? Exactly. Yes. And, uh, and so wow. um, um, all it was is it started at white. People started training. They trained it harder. You know, they trained out in the, the sand, the dirt. And, you know, they didn't have the, you know, like the necessities that we have for martial arts here to this day. So it got all the way to black. And that's why we have the system from white to black. And, and, and then so did, you, the did you say a second degree black? Yes, sir. When, so, I, when I started teaching, I was a second degree. So then yes, there's sir. levels of black. Yes, sir. So that, that, it's an interesting topic. Um, people, um, people think that a black belt, you've achieved something huge. You've achieved something. And it, you do. You do. But people don't realize that when you reach your black belt, that's when your journey begins, when you really start to learn the martial arts skill. From white all the way to black, you're, no, you're learning your basics, your forms, your stances, everything, and you're mastering it. You're getting it to where it needs to be. But when you're a black belt and you work all the way up, that's when you really start putting it to application of what it's actually used for. Fascinating. What it, what it is, yes, sir. So is it, it's just a continuous growth through the process. Like, can you, can you achieve a certain belt that that is it, that is as good as it gets, or do you just keep going? <laughs> um, well, uh, like I said, different styles really have different ways yeah. of how far they go. Um, 
I know the Korean style, the Taekwondo, Mudokwan that I train in, uh, we go all the way to ninth degree. Wow. Yes, sir. And when you're a fifth, fifth dan, fifth degree, you're considered uh, a grandmaster. And then after that, you're just really just putting the time in the martial arts, and then you're just getting promoted from there. What a but neat that, journey yes, that sir. is. How fun. Yes, how did you get into this? You made this a career. You make this your life. How how did you get into this? Uh, well, um, when I was three, we'd uh, go to family functions, me and my family. We'd go to, you know, out in public, maybe go out to eat and see friends. Uh, you know, my grandparents, my sister, my brother, and, and I wouldn't want to associate with anybody. No? I'm just real, real shy. I'd always, you know, my mom's only 4'9", but I, I go all the way to, to grab behind her legs and would hide. <laughs> and um, I, I just wouldn't want to associate with anybody. And so they wanted me to break out of that shyness, so they uh, put me in martial arts. And from there, I just grew, and I just loved it. And, and now you perform in front of thousands of people <laughs> doing this, yes, so sir. you had to get over that shyness. <laughs> yes, sir. So yes. did someone else in the family, like why martial arts? Did, did someone else in your family have this, and you followed their footsteps, or did you, why this sport? No, 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 no particular person, sir. Um, it just was just for me. It just worked. <laughs> yes, sir. That's awesome. Yes, sir. Well, we have a lot of people here who are also in the martial arts, and I guarantee they want to know, how, you are at an amazing level with yes. the awards and the championships you've won. What is, how did you, how, what is your, I don't know if it's your secret or what's your advice to others that you, that has really gotten you to win these? Um, well, what, uh, what I try to teach is, you know, you can do so many things, but you have to put the time in for one. And people think that when they put the time in, they're going to achieve it. Well, it works that way, but it also doesn't work that way. You know, you can achieve something through time if you really, really absolutely want to with as much practice and as much time and much sweat and blood and tears that you want to put into it. And so what I try to teach my students is the word INGU. It's an mm -hmm. acronym, N-G-U, and all it means is never give up. Because you might be put in the, the hardest and most situation in life and you think that, you know, this is, I just can't deal with this. And it's the same thing with martial arts. You're at a low, you're not doing good in training, you know, well, try harder, never give up. You know, if you try one more time, you might be able to master that. I can't do this kick right. Try it one more time. You might be able to do it. And I've seen a lot of people get that discouraged by that and then they try one more time and then, you know, it's like a bright light behind them. It just, they... They wow. learn, they learn, and it, and it makes me learn, it makes me proud that I pass this on to them, and they're trying it, and they're, you know, keeping the history going, yeah. keeping the practice going. Yeah, you, you have so much, you're so polite, you're so well-mannered, like, you just have so much, you're so respectful, like, I'm, where, where does this come from, and do you teach this through your, through your class as well? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Um, well, it, I have to pay a lot of respect to my parents. My parents really enforced that, especially when it came to your instructor, um, you know, and it, it, not really just the people that are in command, like your elders and uh, the adults, you know, everybody, you know, a little child three years old to a 70 year old person, you know, you treat them with the exact same respect. That's what my parents always taught me. That's and beautiful. I give them a lot of respect for that. That is beautiful. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, you said this is a continuing, continuous journey for you, and I feel like you've won every award that's out there. Um, what are you, where do you want to see yourself in 10 years? What do you want to, what do you want to accomplish? Um, well, um, this year I'll be graduating from high school. And, uh, that's an I'll, exciting uh, yes, sir. I can't believe you yeah. haven't even graduated high school. That still doesn't <laughs> kick in. Yes, sir. What do you, are you going to go to college? Or are you going to... Yes, sir. Well, um, the high school that I'm attending, I'll be finishing with my AA degree. So, at, so from there, I could, you know, it's, it's easier for me. But I want to try to go to school for business to keep the school growing and, uh, you know, flourishing the way it has been for the last five years. And God, God willing, it'll keep prospering that way. Yeah. So, so you, for the next 10 years, you want to work on your business and your school, and that is going to yes. be your priority. Yes, sir. You are going to yes, be sir. so <laughs> successful. That is going to be an amazing school. So thank you. That's <laughs> awesome. Who do you look up to most out of all the people out there? Um, you know, People can vi visualize and say, oh, Bruce Lee, I visualize Bruce Lee, or I visualize Bill Superfoot Wallace, the fastest kicker in the world. But the person that I look up to the most is probably my mom. Yeah? My mom. She's, she's got this so, so much love for, for what I do 
And it, it's, it's unbelievable, really, you know. I, I can't talk about it without, you know, really going into tears because that's how much she's loved what I've done and supported me with everything that I've ever done, ever, anything I've ever thought of. And, you know, that's the person I admire. That's who I want to grow up to be right there. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Yes, Good. Mom's here, right? Yes, right there. That's awesome. Yeah. So you are actually skilled in weapons. What is what is yes, what exactly is that, and what is that like? Uh, weapons are ancient uh, farming tools, actually. So uh, um, let's just take a uh, pitchfork, for example. In the modern martial arts and the Japanese arts, uh, Okinawan style, they call it a sai, a sai, and it's a it's a pitchfork into three. And uh, what they use that for is they use that to pick up uh, like the grain. They pick up the yeah. you know different uh, things to put them in the buckets, and then they used a bow. A long staff, and you've probably seen them in the movies in the ancient times. They had buckets on it's the like staff. It's like the Mulan. Then, I used to watch right. Mulan, the Disney movie. Right, exactly. Like run exactly. With the, the buckets. It's, it's exactly right. And th then robbers and you know the um, bad guys, right? They they come around. All they do is just drop it. They got a bow. You know they come into the farms trying to steal their their you know their animals, livestock, uh, anything that they need, and they, they got a weapon. I never knew that's where it came from. Yes, sir. That is so yes, intriguing. Wow. Yes, well, you had, I don't know if it's a weapon, but you were out here, and I, I don't know if they're nunchucks or what, but it was like a th three bars oh, with like yes. whatever. Was that a farming tool or is that yes, not sir. a weapon? Yes, sir. What farming exactly. tool is that? Well, what it, did it, you grow up on? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> but uh, it actually originated from the nunchucks, which would be just the double with the, the, the rope attached. And what they use that for is they snap the wheat. They use it wrap around, snap it, or you know any farming necessity that they need, and then they use that to snap it. And so what that grew into, they use that as a weapon, but they use that for close quarter fighting. So I have to be this close to be able to hit you with a nunchuck. So they thought, okay, let's add another piece to that. And they enlarged the handle so that they, if they're far away, they can use that as a weapon and still use it for the exact same thing to to whip it. That is so yeah. interesting. My my dad is here, and he has um, he has a an elk ranch and uh, I don't think he ever had me doing that. He had me with my hands, like bare hands, <laughs> pulling those weeds. And I wish I would have known that back then. It would have made it a lot more fun. So <laughs> that was sure. really cool. Well, you are going to come back on, um, I think, right after this break. So we're going to cut to a commercial and we're going to get to watch one of your performances that you do with our show. So awesome. with that, Dylan, thank you so much. This has thank been an you, honor sir. and you're just cool. Like, we're so excited for you and um, we look forward to having you back on. All right. Thank you, with sir. With that, I'm going to cut to a quick break and we'll be right back, everyone. Dude, hey guys, what's up? I'm Cole Pollock, and this is Mitchell Hogg. Hogg. Hogg? Hogg. Hogg. On the Colt Bullock Show. 